بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم All praise be to Allah the creator and sustainer of all and peace and blessings be upon the prophet Muhammad and all the prophets from Adam to him peace and blessings be upon them all Again may Allah's peace blessings mercy compassion be upon you all This will be the first of a series of talks in short on moral and spiritual teachings of Mawlana Muhammad Jalaluddin Rumi Let me give you first a very short introduction about Mawlana's life Mawlana Muhammad Jalaluddin known in the Muslim world as Mawlana our master in the west he made a reputation by the title Rumi because of the place where he lived in Anatolia which was known as the land of romance Rumi he was born in the city of Belkh in Afghanistan in the year 1207 then traveled with his family to Anatolia lived most of his life in Konya where he returned finally to his beloved lord Allah almighty on the 17th of december 1273 when you look at his genealogy from his father's side mawlana rumi's line goes back all the way to the prophet muhammad peace be upon him through maternal line through paternal line his lineage goes back to the first of prophet's most distinguished companions abu bakr siddiq radiyallahu anhu may allah be pleased with him mamnana's mother was mu'mina khatun who was the daughter of the governor of belkh city he had received his edu- education first from his father muhammad bahauddin walat who had already earned the title of the sultan of the scholars because of his vast erudition profound knowledge of islam and upon the death of his father mawlana continues his religious education and training under the supervision of his father's successor sayyid burhanuddin muhaqqiq tirmizi mawlana also traveled one time in his life to aleppo for about 7 years where he specialized in islamic jurisprudence islamic discourse islamic sciences then upon his return from aleppo to konya mawlana began teaching his disciples in particular then giving moral lessons spiritual uh, exhortations to common people as well as the elite and the royal family of the satraps when he was about 38 years old he met a great charismatic figure who came from almost nowhere known as shamsuddin tirmizi uh, tabrizi from tabriz and shamsuddin of course the son of faith and these two god loving luminaries of islam spent time together in retreat self isolation praying and contemplating together thanks to the influence of shams the day by day increasing love of allah in the heart of mamlana burst into flame the meeting with shams of mamlana was described in the sources as the meeting of two oceans and mamlana when we look at his life with shams it's very important very crucial actually is a uh, turning point in his life and shams appeared to have played if i use this mystical terminology the role of a spiritual master who had been destined by allah to work on the inner world of mamlana so much so that mamlana in the end thanks to the spiritual elixir he had received from shams turned into what i may call an unstoppable articulator of divine love 
Both Shams and Nevlana served for each other as a mirror to reflect each other's beauty. Both of them recognized their love of Allah in their respective personalities. And Shams sudden disappearance after two years together, life with Mevlana, caused in Mevlana's life a deep grief, which resulted in the end in the flowing of beautiful couplets from the tongue of Mevlana, sometimes in Persian, most of the time, is, and sometimes in Arabic, which turned into Mesnevi and also Diwan and Rubai. Until his final return to his Lord on December 17, 1273, Mevlana continued to articulate powerfully his heart-touching lyrics. Most of his lyrics, couplets in Persian, as I've indicated, and there are very few in Turkish, but, and also Arabic rubais. I would like to also share with you the moment of his departure from this world. When he passed away on December 17, 1273, his funeral ceremony attended by all the people of Konya, young and old, Muslims and non-Muslims. Some of the Muslims attempted to drive away the non-Muslims from the funeral procession, saying that, what does this ceremony have to do with you? This master of religion, of Islam, Mevlana, belongs to us, and he belongs to our faith. But look at the reply given by the non-Muslims to Muslims that time, during this funeral congregation. When, he said, we have understood and learned the truth of Mo Moses and Jesus, peace upon them, from Mevlana's words. We have seen in him good behaviors and excellent traits of the perfect prophets about whom we read in our scriptures. We are his lovers and disciples as much as you are his lovers and disciples. The personality of Mevlana is the sun of truths for us, which shines upon the people and bestows light upon them generously. The sun loves all houses and all houses are brightened by it is light. Mevlana for us like a bread. No one can dispense with bread. Have you ever seen a hungry man fleeing from bread? So the night of Mevlana Rumi's departure is called the Shebi Arus in Persian, the night of blissful union with his beloved. It marks the joyous moment of the lover's return and arrival in the beloved. When you look at even the description of death for Mevlana, it, is, it doesn't mean separation or annihilation or decomposition, decomposition or nothingness. Let us listen to him. He says, when my, coffin, when, when my coffin begins, it is procession on the day of my death. Do not think I feel the grief of this world, that I feel departure from it and never fall into such doubt. Do not weep over me or say, or nor say, what a pity. Should you fall into such trap of Satan, it will indeed be time for mourning. Do not say separation when you, when you see my funeral procession going. In fact, it will be for a time of meeting and reunion for me. Do not call my departure farewell when laying me down in the grave, for the grave merely veils from us the people of paradise, or my friends. Don't search for my tomb in the graveyard. Look for my tomb in the hearts of the lovers of God. Allah Almighty has created me from love. Even though I die and decay, I am the same love. After our death, do not seek therefore our tomb on the face of the earth. Our tomb lies in the hearts of God-loving Gnostics and spiritual masters. Mevlana Jalalettin Rumi left a huge legacy, intellectual and spiritual legacy behind himself. Thanks to his son, Sultan Velet, and also his most uh, intimate disciple, Hussam Eddin Çelebi, that his tradition, his teaching, and his treasure 
has carried on and continued up until today. When you look at, he left basically a couple of, and maybe we can say five important works. One, Mastavi, written in Persian, and about 27,000 couplets, and six volumes. And also in prose, Fihi Mafi, Discourses of Rumi, and also for Shams Diwani, Shamsi Kibir, or Diwani Kibir. And again, Majali Seba, Seven Moral Exhortations or Sermons. Then also, collection of letters which he sent to his students. I will continue my lectures with the forthcoming about 29 days of Ramadan. This will be the first, as I indicated earlier. Let me conclude, since this is the first day of Ramadan, or beginning of Ramadan, again, let me share with you how Mevlana understands fasting. He says, if you desire the Quran to be infused in your heart, to be imbibed in your heart and in your spirit, you should know that fasting is the key, is the secret of the Quran's spirituality. And for fasting transforms your heart into a state of pure light, luminosity, luminosity, even as bright as, bright as the daylight. Therefore, when you enter the month of fasting, goes on Mevlana, you should be ever grateful to Allah Almighty and welcome it as cheerful as possible. For those who fall in grief due to the coming of Ramadan, fasting is forbidden for them. They do not deserve it. End of the quotation of Mevlana. This is from Diwan Kibir. Since Quran was revealed as a book of guidance, as a book of light for all humanity, and since we are experiencing this beautiful season of month of Ramadan, and this is a good start for us, let we let, let us take this month and infuse the blessing of the month by reading the Quran, by understanding the Quran, also by understanding the wisdom of these spiritual masters who devoted their life to the interpretation of the Quran. I wish you all a healthy, peaceful, fruitful, rewarding fasting. Let our days and nights be enlightened by the beautiful recitation of the Quran. Let our minds be nurtured by the moral and spiritual wisdom of the Quran. Let our hearts be filled with the love of Allah. May Allah's love and mercy be upon you all. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you.